My amendment uh, is the prohibition of tobacco. This amendment will ban all forms of tobacco, including smokeless tobacco. Smoking is the number one cause of preventable death in the United States, causing over 393,000 deaths per year. Secondhand smoke is a serious health hazard uh, for people of all ages and is estimated to cause close to 50,000 deaths per year. These preventable deaths could easily be avoided if tobacco were outlawed. Tobacco is highly dangerous to a person's health and affects every organ in the body. Tobacco usage over a long period of time results in premature and painful deaths. The smoke from cigarettes affects not only the users, but other people as well. This is known as secondhand smoking, which is hazardous to the environment as well as other people. The amount of money spent on lost productivity and smoke-related healthcare costs is tremendous, approximately $193 billion which isn't ideal in our struggling economy. We should vote for this amendment because it would greatly incre eh, increase the quality of life and reduce the cost of burden on society. Banning tobacco would be highly beneficial to society and there would be dr drastically less tobacco or smoke related illness. One might argue that they have the right to do whatever they want to their body because they have rights and are free to make their own decisions. This is true, but how much should society pay for someone's personal decisions? Smoking not only affects the individual, but family, friends, and the environment. The cost required to keep tobacco legal is too great to ignore, and a few people's bad decisions, bad decisions should not dictate how many people should die or how, many unnecessar or how much unnecessary money should be spent. All right. I would, instead of to make a new 28th Amendment, I wish to reinstate the, and add to the Second Amendment, which is the right to bear arms. It, uh, the amendment doesn't specifically state that the handguns are arms, so, that, so states have banned them in some cities, and that's, which is really unconstitutional. So in order for citizens to feel secure and use their rights to self-defense in all, every place, they should be entitled to use handguns anywhere as if it was any other arm. I wish to give citizens the power in, this, in the Second Amendment to bear arms, including handguns, by further defining the rights of the Constitution, essentially limiting the opinions of the courts. So the court, the Supreme Court would have a, a significant amount less deciding power because the Second Amendment would define the right to bear arms further. Uh, people need direct recognition of the, what the rights that they have in the Second Amendment pertain to. And uh, handguns are classified as arms, falling into the right of people to bear and supply them. Uh, the, to amend upon the Second Amendment and give, the, give an outline the rights of the citizens to hold and supply arms is what I would want to do and my addition to the Second Amendment. I believe that the 28th Amendment should make the government balance their budget annually. Uh, may having the government balance their budget annually uh, will do a couple of things. Uh, it will save taxpayers money and it will s slowly lower the debt and boost the economy. Um, Uh, this will keep excess spending under control um, and it will save people money and since people will be saving money they'll want to increase their spending and boost the economy. Um, and it, balancing the budget annually over um, an extended period of time will slowly lower the debt that the U.S. is currently in. Um, people are one, some reasons that it would be ejected is if there was a disaster and we had to go over our budget, um, we, would, uh, we would have to resort to a different category and draw money out of there for um, our disaster category that we'd put money into. Um, and after that would all settle down, then we'd slowly start, we'd put back money that we took into the category we took from. Um, so, uh, balancing the budget will uh, lower debt, help the economy, and save 
people money. My 20th Amendment will actually be a revision to Article 2, Section 1 of the Constitution. In this part of the Constitution, it involves presidential terms. Originally, the president gets two terms of four years each. I'd like to extend these terms to two terms, six years each. In doing so, this would make the president be able to stay into office longer. Usually, by the end of the president's term, not much has been done. By adding this extension, the president will be able to pass more bills, and the people and the president will be able to see his bills through. Whereas in a four-year term, he comes to an end. In the president's six-year term, uh, there will be a three-year evaluation to see if he has done his job and should be allowed three more years, or if he should be kicked out of office. Uh, this evaluation will be done based on a vote by the people of the United States of America. People may oppose this because they feel bad, a feel a bad president or someone who is not doing a great job in office will be in office too long. But this will be prevented by putting in the three-year evaluation. Okay. Stick with me, I'm gonna move fast. We have two minutes to do this. All right, so my amendment, every vote counts as citizens. Um, first, to back this would be to abolish the Electoral College. If, a, if you take a state like California, which has 55 electoral votes, take a state like Wisconsin, we have 10 electoral votes, right? And they have a population of about 500, 5 million, 500 and so whatever for Wisconsin. And California has, who the, who the hell knows how many California has. You take that and if 5 million from California and our 5 million, if they vote on the same, our two different people, we're going to get 10 electoral votes from Wisconsin, 55 from California. Now that is totally unfair. I mean, come on, what the hell? And so to be, to under my amendment, we would abolish it and only popular vote would elect the president. And my second main reason would be um, just because you have the popular vote doesn't mean you always win, the elect, uh, win because of the Electoral College. Uh, like take the election of 2000 for him. Gore won the popular vote by a land, uh, not a landslide, but by a lot. And he lost the election because Bush won Florida and all this, and it was all a miscount, and it was all this. But, and then you take the 1876 election with Samuel, whatever the hell his name is, uh, he had 200,000 more votes than the man that beat him, but he still lost by one electoral vote. And then in 88, uh, not 1888, Gover Cleveland had uh, just about another 100,000 than the other guy, and he lost 233 electoral votes to 168. Thank you, vote for my amendment. I'm Keeler. All right, I'm amending the 26th Amendment to lower the voting age to 16, because I believe that 16 and 17 year olds would offer many help, much help to the voting. I believe that, teen, I believe that teens are more informed on the current political issues concerning our country, because they're learning about them every day in school and they're co staying connected with what's going on via social media. And the, and the teens would offer a unique perspective to the voting, giving more opinions and their own, their own thoughts. And I believe that it would offer a better, better percentage for a voter turnout because t if they start the voting earlier, kids will be more likely to continue voting as they get real older. And Kids, are, kids aren't able to influence much when they start their lives. Once they get on, they start to influence more, and they're eager to influence everything, in especially the country. And te teens are just ready to help, help everything, every way they can, even if it doesn't, even if it doesn't work out. And teens are ready. My proposal for a 28th Amendment would be to limit the length of the term for the Supreme Court judges. 
The change of the judges will change with the times. Our society is ever so changing. We constantly change our views because we are trying to fit in. The motivation of the new judges will inspire good differences for the United States of America. For I think very few people will disapprove of this opposed, proposed amendment because our country, our country is looking for answers. Answers that new people will come up with and have motivation. And with that, I propose the term length to be five years and a term, two terms limit if re-elected. Most people, as far as civilians in this country, will approve of this amendment because of its diverse and very good opportunity. The judges will allow the United States of America to change with the ever so slightly distance of the world. My 28th Amendment will be banning assault-grade weapons. The biggest problem with these weapons is that they were made for the sole purpose to kill. They are military-grade weapons with characteristics that make them easier to kill as many people in as short a time as possible. There has been an increase in shootings from 1982 to 2012, and over 143 of them have involved assault-grade weapons. 71 of them were done with semi-automatic handguns, 28 involved assault rifles, 21 involved shotguns, all under the class of assault-grade weapons. Assault weapons hold characteristics such as pistol grips, bayonet mounts, and extended clips. They should not be in the hands of civilians. The only people responsible enough to hold assault weapons are those in law enforcement and those who have served or are currently serving. Also, shootings that are done generally with assault weapons have been known to have higher casualties than weapons done with standard grade hunting rifles and shotguns. Uh, some examples are the recent shooting in Newtown, Connecticut, Sandy Hook Elementary. There were 27 people killed there. Uh, one of the worst was the, um, in Blacksburg, Virginia at the Polytech Institute. 32 people were killed there. The Columbine shooting, 13 people were killed there. Standard guns have mechanisms such as bolt action that make them harder to reload, and you cannot kill as many people with them. In conclusion, the public has no true use of these guns, and self-defense can be done just as easily with standard grade hunting rifles and shotguns.